So welcome everybody. Um, we might just wait a few minutes to make sure that we get a few people on here before we get started. Uh, so today we're just going to have a session around some of the student wellbeing supports that we've got um, happening while we're in the remote learning stage. Um, great, great to see some people joining us. Thank you for joining us. We're trying to start right on time today. And hopefully there'll be no technical issues because we're not moving around like we did on our school tours the other day, which have been going really well. Thanks for joining us. We're slowly growing. Yes, which is great. So thank you. Um, I'll make a start. Uh, so my name is Shane Kruger. I'm the assistant principal, one of the assistant principals, and looking after one of the areas I look after is student wellbeing. Uh, so today we're going to have a bit of a focus on that for this live session. So if you do have any questions, feel free to post them, um, and either myself will answer them, or I've got Catherine Ford here, the other assistant principal who looks after. The lady is who will also be responding in the comments section. So hopefully between the two of us, we can answer any of your questions. And if not, we're happy to get back to you. Um, first, I just want to, uh, just on behalf of the college, thank everyone. We got to our end of our first full week of the remote learning period, um, which, I, which is, is, is exciting in itself. Um, we're, I suppose we're all working through together on a range of different, um, this whole new experience of working remotely, and it presents itself with a range of different challenges. Um, we've been getting feedback from our students and our teachers and overwhelmingly that's been really positive um, about how our students are engaging in the remote learning um, and what that's looking like for them. Um, of course, like anything, if there's little things that are, I suppose hiccups in the road or things that aren't working, we're listening to that feedback um, and we're um, adjusting what we're doing to make sure that we can meet the needs of our students so they can engage with their learning. So what are we doing for student wellbeing in terms of uh, whilst we're in remote learning? Well, one of the things is um, each of our students have got a remote learning support group teacher. So what that is, is that's around the similar um, have with our home group teachers. So the remote learning support group teachers are there to check in with our students on a regular basis just to see um, how they're settling in. Um, they might be doing little activities with the kids just to find out exactly what's, um, what's going on for them. And so they've got that regular contact with someone um, at the college. Uh, the, so I suppose for parents and for students, they're the first point of contact if you know, you're finding any issues or you've got any concerns. Um, you should have received an email from the remote learning support group teacher just to introduce themselves. So that could be your first point of contact if you'd like to find out anything more about what's going on or if you're just a little bit worried um, about what may be happening for your child whilst they're in the remote learning period. Um, one of the uh, other things that you have is that we do have our student wellbeing team that are still active in supporting students. Um, and it just looks a little bit different for this term. So what that's gonna look like is that's gonna take the form of online counselling. So how that will work is that if there is a students out there that are perhaps um, not coping or they, you know, there might be some issues they're experiencing whilst in the isolation, or you know, parents are a little bit worried about their child, or even indeed, you know, perhaps you're worried about a friend of yours, you can still contact our student wellbeing team by sending them an email. Um, and the details of how you do that is on Compass, which I'll explain in a moment. But you'll send them an email and then they'll reach out to you and contact you and make a time um, to sit down and touch base with you to have an online session, um, just to talk about what's going on and see how we can support you um, from the school. And if perhaps, you know, it's beyond us, referring you on to somebody else that can help you. So that's a great resource to have. Um, on what you'll find on Compass in the Compass newsfeed, is a post about, I suppose, some of the key contacts within the school. Um, so that outlines who you need to contact and when. So I've always already mentioned the remote learning support group teacher as your first point of contact. Um, if you've got specific concerns around a particular subject that you're working on, well, your first point of contact for that will be the classroom teacher. Email, uh, reach out to them and they'll get back to you to see how they can support you. We have our sub-school team um, that are available as well. So there are year level leaders. All their contact details are available on the key contacts list as well. Um, and that's where you'll find our list for our student wellbeing contacts also. So you can touch base with them, um, send them an email and they'll get back to you um, and support you with that. Uh, in terms of um, Compass, you probably noticed that um, this term, we already had plans to 
um, begin a new way of using Compass to keep our families informed and provide ongoing feedback about learning and behaviour. Um, with remote learning coming in, that shift a little bit, but that process remains the same. So you might find now that you'll start seeing grey Compass posts appearing in your Compass newsfeed. Um, that's a way for our staff to document and to share with you um, things that come up for your child whilst they're at school. So they might be some concerns around perhaps some behaviours that they're seeing or just some concerns about some academic concerns that are just starting to present themselves just to keep you in the loop so you can um, be aware of that um, and see what the school's doing um, to respond to that. And you also see our green compass posts and they're to acknowledge the positive engagement of students at school. So they're two ways for us to increase our communication with you and to share with you what's happening at school. So you'll see as well. Um, the next thing is in regards to integration. So our students that are funded, um, our integration students, each student and their parents should have been contacted by now by our integration team and one of our aides. And all our students have been allocated an aid and the integration aid will be making time with each of those students to connect with them. Um, and have some one-on-one -on -one sessions with them or small group sessions to assist them with their learning. Uh, that should already be set up and it started rolling out this week. So hopefully that's been happening for our students and our team, our integration team were meeting today to evaluate the process of how that's worked. And again, we'll adjust as needed. But if you do have concerns around that or perhaps that hasn't happened for you at the moment, please send an email through um, to Katrina Katz or Meryl Tunstall and their contact details are on that document that I mentioned on Compass and they'll be able to assist you with that. Um, students that are on individual learning plans, they will still be applying for students learning from home and teachers are adjusting and differentiating the curriculum to meet the needs of students. Uh, that will be appearing on Compass and students and parents should see that. So keep in mind as we keep saying, Compass first point of contact each day, that's where you should be looking for all your lessons and find out what's happening for the day and find out where, um, when your live learning sessions are occurring, That'll all be differentiated for the students on individual learning plans. Again, if you find that the work that's being left for you is um, a bit difficult and you're having some um, challenges with it, just contact the classroom teacher and let them know. Our teachers are great and they're more than happy to support you. And sometimes one of the things we talk about is some people you just don't know unless someone tells you. So perhaps if you are finding it a little bit difficult, contact your teachers and let them know and they'll be able to assist you with that as well. Um, and one of the other things is, I suppose the last thing I want to say before I see if there's any questions that people may have is really around looking after yourself. Um, we're in a probably about, it's now four, four and a half weeks since you've actually been at school and you're in isolation and you're staying at home. Um, and so you're probably going a little bit stir crazy um, in, that, in that situation. So what we really want to say to you is you really do need to be looking after yourself. Make sure you are taking those regular breaks. Um, it's really good if you can try and keep into some sort of routine and, you know, in particular, having a bit of a sleep routine. Don't stay up late um, for the sake of staying up late because you're not actually having to get up and come to school. Keep that sleep routine the same because that's really important for you, for your learning and for your health as well. Um, make sure you're eating well and drinking plenty of water. That's going to help you with your learning and help you stay focused. Like I said, take regular breaks and um, get physical. We've, we've left some uh, activities for you to be is um, on Compass in the remote learning folder. And for those of you that have forgotten where that is, it's just in school documentation for students remote learning where there's a whole range of resources for you. And there's some activities there that you can really um, do to help you um, stay physical um, and get outside and get a bit of that fresh air. And one of the other important things, the last thing I wanna mention is really about staying connected. Um, find ways that you can connect with your friends, connect with your teachers, um, make the time to do that because it's really important. I don't know about you, but I've, I've talked to a number of people um, today about the fact that, you know, connecting online is great, but it's still not the same um, as some of that human connections that we have in those relationships. But it's what we have at the moment, so we've got to make the most of it. So, you know, reach out to your friends, reach out to your family, um, make regular contacts with them, find fun ways to connect online, um, and just have that connected, connectedness. Um, so that you um, are being able to talk to other people and really, you know, sharing this experience together. Um, so I'm going to, that's kind of some things that we're doing at the school level um, to support students. Um, we're putting things in place to support um, your children and the students. Um, 
and at the same time we've got um, things at the school that if perhaps things aren't working for you you can contact us and we can then follow up with supports in place as well so I might just have a look to see if we've got any questions coming through if anyone has anything just in regards to student well-being and how we can support students I know about that there was a comment that I was laughing at now because someone has written who do you think that is and Dwayne Johnson well I'll that as a compliment thanks <laughs> is any other questions Listen, we do, I do want to say we do appreciate, and as a school, we've said it on a number of cases, we do understand that this is a, is a challenging time. Everyone, we know that we have our, um, you know, our students are learning from home. We know that they're in an environment uh, um, where, you know, they're, they're trying to work independently. And for some students, that's working really well and they're thriving on that. Other students, you know, are really wanting to um, be back at school to have that connection with other people. So, we're, and so both, you know, all students are working really hard. We know parents are working incredibly hard. You know, they're working, you know, whether they're working, they're supporting their students, sorry, their children, our students, they're supporting them. Um, we're all trying to work together. We're all learning this together as we go along. Um, we really appreciate all the feedback getting from our community whether it's through our students or through our parents. Um, you know, people are recognising the great things that are happening and really sharing with us some areas that perhaps haven't worked as well. And we're trying to adapt um, as much as possible to meet that need. So thank you for that feedback um, and for all your support in what we're doing at the school as well. All right, just scroll down if there's any questions. Yeah, great. All right. Okay, well, thank you all very much for your time and for joining us today. Like we said, if, if you do contact anyone at the college, all of our details are on the news feed. You'll see with all the key contacts at the school. Please don't hesitate to contact us if we can be of assistance in any way. Um, good luck for the, um, the remainder of this remote learning period. Look after yourselves, take care, and we can't wait to see you all when you come back to school. Okay, have a great weekend. If you end this live, you'll be able to choose for it if you want to save or delete it.